Hi guys, Andy from Cruise Master. The Land Cruiser 300 has been out for a few years now and we thought we'd finally get round to doing a tow test with it. So we've got a tandem axle JB caravan behind us and we're going to hit the highway and see how it goes. Now I've had a few Land Cruisers over the years, had a 76, a 105, a 200 and even a Prado, so I'm really keen to see how this thing goes. So let's head out. So one of the big things everyone was losing their mind about when the 300 was announced was the drop off of the V8 and heading into a six cylinder. Everyone was concerned it wasn't going to have the pulling power. Um, I think everybody forgot that the 100 that everybody loved has had a six cylinder in and they were worried when they went to a V8. So ultimately what's this thing like as you put the power down and pull? pulling onto the highway now to so give that a good go. I actually think it's better than the 200 from a couple of reasons. There's definitely a little bit more power and torque there which can be amplified a bit by the ratios in the, in the new gearbox. The torque converter definitely the torque converter and the transmission cowl have made a big difference as I was pulling onto the highway there in the 200 it would have been dropping a ton of gears making a lot of noise and really not getting too much further but that held the gear whilst whilst we pulled which is a much more um, much nicer experience there that um, it's not busy doing things that it that it shouldn't be and that transmission cowl is also very noticeable when you're just driving around town as well always found that my 200 was never in the right gear. It was always too high or too, too low. And um, when you're getting up to 80 and 100, it wasn't really changing into the right gear. I think a lot of people are trying to overcome that with um, transmission tunes and um, torque converter lockup kits and that type of stuff. And so far, it um, certainly feels that it's um, a lot better for towing this combination of engine and gearbox. Now we are sitting on the highway, we're doing about 90 kilometres an hour. The car is actually telling me it's doing a DPF regen, it's something you find a lot in all these new cars now. Um, we're sitting in 7th gear, just checking it over to manual. Just under 100 now, 2000 RPM. If we get rid of that note, and we're doing about 14 litres per hundred at the moment. So, pretty good so far. Now, the, this particular Land Cruiser is dead stock, um, albeit with some um, in-coil airbags we put in the back, so no engine wrapping, no bull bar, no additional weight, stock tyres. So it's in, a, in about its most natural form. Um, even though we've got the airbags in the vehicle, we've dropped most of the air back, uh, most of the air pressure out now, just to see how the thing rides without any additional assistance. I was just coming off the highway there. Probably saw me having to do some braking. There's a ton of traffic stationary in front of me here. Whilst we're sitting in a bit of traffic, um, also on the transmission cowl. I uh, also found when you were idling along or you'd take off with a bit of weight in the 200 that you get a lot of slip from the torque converter before it picked up and you don't feel that in the 300, it's a lot more direct. So that's going to be interesting that when we get this thing onto the beach towing as well because I found with the 200 because it had a lot of slip and then it would come in that it would just dig holes, so hopefully this a bit more linear delivery of power would make this thing a bit more um, tractable in you know, low traction conditions, so that would be interesting. One thing that's quite common modification in most tow vehicles is bigger mirrors that you can slide out, some of the MSA type products. 
definitely need that in this. Well, there's good vision with these mirrors. I can't see up the side of the caravan like you need to to really do a um, properly safe job of towing. So that'll be something I'd get done in this. Obviously to be able to tow, we did put our brake controller in the 300. So we're using a Tow Pro uh, Elite in this wired to the uh, tow plug on the back, as well as um, we ignition switch our Anderson connectors as well. So we're able to power the van whilst we're driving along. The highway now. I don't know whether you can see it, but there's a few whoops in the road here. And the vehicle is just doing this all the time. It's just pitching front to back. It's, it's quite, it's too soft for me. Um, vehicle ride is a very personal thing. People who are, say, used to sports cars like firmer suspension and people who are you know, used to comfy SUVs probably find it okay but my my take is it's uh, it's a bit soft if you were driving um, if you were towing every day for sure if you're doing it every now and again it's probably not a big issue but I would uh, definitely be looking for a suspension package to improve it at the same time the GVM and the, the payload on it has imp the payloads improved slightly from the 200 due to it being a bit lighter but if you're doing it and you're more than towing and put a bull bar on and a couple of things on the vehicle, you were looking for a GVM increase as well. So the suspension package should hopefully, um, that comes with that should hopefully deal with those issues. One of the things that I utterly hate about this vehicle is the amount of electronic stuff going on. So it's got lane keeping and blind spot monitoring and all that type of stuff. The lane keeping is a nightmare. And even uh, without the caravan on, you're driving along and it just comes in so invasively. There's a lot of other vehicles that have done a much better job of tuning it so that it's not, not as aggressive. With a caravan on the back on the highway, it's basically unnerving as, you, as you're driving along. Um, also, when you put a, car, put a trailer on the back and you need to reverse, you've got to turn all the sensors off manually. And this is a VX trim model because it thinks there's a, as it thinks there's a person behind you and applies the brakes, which means then you can't reverse. I just feel that that is unneeded in this day and age. You should be able to sense that you've got a trailer attached through the trailer plug and just disable that sensitivity. But um, certainly something's been overlooked. The other thing you do when you get one of these vehicles is it's got a lot of uh, safety warnings and hazard warnings and everything that come up through the nav system in it. And I think I've just about got rid of them all. There is one left that I can't figure out how to get rid of it. And then how far you've got to delve into the menus to switch it all off is ridiculous. I think the age of nanny state in vehicles is um, getting a bit over the top. I get off my um, get off my soapbox there and get back to talking about the about the vehicle. It's funny we're getting some there's some smaller bumps there in the road and then it was it was bouncing a bit a little bit um, uncontrolled so I feel like the, the damping's not quite up the spec in the in the rear shocks definitely tuned for passenger comfort not for not for load carrying as we're uh, using in this application fuel consumption is always uh, an important consideration when you're buying a new vehicle um, particularly from the cost of ownership but in the case where you're heading out bush uh, the range um, in the the range that you have before you have to fill up. Now the 300 did reduce its fuel capacity, so it needs to be 
more fuel efficient than the 200 to get away with that. We've been, did a bit of highway there. We're doing some 60 to 80 kilometer stuff now, just heading out to the Brabi Peninsula. And we're sitting at around 17 liters per 100 now. Obviously it's quite hard to um, translate because it all depends on how you drive and how the vehicle's set up and what you're towing. But just want to give some context here. The uh, tandem caravan behind me I think it's a three and a half ton ATM van. So I'm not quite sure what the curb is, but I'd be guessing it's in the, the 2.8, three ton mark. Don't quote me on that. I'm just guessing by how it, how it feels. So um, we're, not, we're not loaded all the way up to its tow capacity. And as well, the ball weight is probably not maxed out at 350 as well. So you can translate some of these feelings that like, vehicle's a bit soft, it'd probably be a bit softer at full ball mass. When the 300 um, was coming out, we got invited to a, a launch of it. And I was a bit disappointed in what they'd produced, given the jump between the 100 and the 200 it was so dramatic with a big engine change, um, uh, traction control systems, better braking, and that type of thing. It was such a big change in, in those models. I didn't feel like the change between the 200 and the 300 was quite as dramatic. Maybe that says a lot about how good the 200s have been. But, I mean, why would you why would you buy the 300 I guess is the question right? if you've got an aging 200 and you need to upgrade then I think it's a, a good choice and I think the main thing you'll notice is this engine and transmission calibration because the rest of it is normal Toyota they would all everything worked pretty well the technology isn't uh, market leading but you know it's going to be solid um, interested to see when we take it off-road what the wheel articulation is like because I made a big song and a dance about that in the launch that the suspension geometry has been improved they're trying to match the old 80 and how the articulation is so th that'd be interesting can't say I ever really had a big concern over what it was like in, my, in the 200 but uh, every bit of help when you're in a hard situation I think is good so if you're looking for a new vehicle, it's definitely the right thing to do. Would you pack in your 200 for this? Um, debatable. I don't, I don't feel like the, the overall package is substantially different. A lot of the things that you have to do to a 200 to kind of make it a remote touring package, you're going to have to do to this. So if you've got a heavily modified 200, and then you wanted to get into a 300, you have to consider that and change over. All right, so we've done a bit of highway kilometers now. And as I said before, the transmission cal and the, uh, and the new engine is definitely a substantial improvement on the Land Cruiser 200. The stock suspension is definitely not um, up to the task of heavy towing. Just coming through the last section here, there was a bit of a, a dip in the road and I bottomed the whole lot out in the car. So really a bit too soft for my liking and it'd be something that I would definitely be focusing on. So from here, um, we are going to do a video on how this thing tows on the beach. That's why we've just arrived here at Bribey Island. So if you want to see how it goes there, make sure you keep an eye out on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram to make sure you don't miss out. <laughs> 